I'm so angry. You and your parents both make me angry. Hey, my parents have nothing to do with this, all right? Shut up. Don't you dare talk back to me. I will never take care or do anything for your parents ever again. I won't have your parents at any of my family's weddings or funerals. If you don't like that, then get the hell out. Fine, but are you okay with that? What are you talking about? I'm actually glad that you're leaving. Don't ever contact me again. As he said that, I confronted my husband, Dan, with a piece of paper. The moment my husband saw the paper, he was surprised. What? Divorce papers? My husband was lying on the sofa, but he got up instantly. Hey, what's the meaning of this? You're divorcing me all of a sudden? My name is Mary Cooper, and I'm currently a 29-year-old company employee. I currently live with my husband, Dan, and with our three-year-old son, Sean. I have been working for my father's company since I graduated from college. But, to my annoyance, my husband is completely against it. I work for a well-known company. Wouldn't it be embarrassing if people found out that my wife works at a fairly small parts factory? Why would you even say that? When we first got married, you were showing off to people by saying that I was the CEO's daughter. Why do you even hate my parents and the company my father runs so much these days? You'll never understand, will you? You should just quit your job. My husband insults me by saying such things and tells me to quit working. I think it's cool that my father is always enthusiastic about his work, always challenging himself and always pushing forward. And I respect my father very much because he's a person who cares about his employees. So I have no intention of quitting my father's company at all. It actually seems like my husband doesn't like the fact that I respect my father more than him. I was thinking how petty Dan was and started to wonder why he suddenly started saying such horrible things. When I was eating breakfast with my husband and son, my husband said to my son as if he remembered something. You know what, Sean? When you grow up, go to a good university and work for a major company. Don't you dare ever get a job at a small factory making parts. I just couldn't believe what Dan was saying to Sean. Hey, don't talk to our child like that. I said angrily, to which my husband replied, There's nothing weird about it. I'm just teaching him what's normal in the world. Why doesn't he realize that this statement in itself is insulting, not only to my father and myself, but also to the employees who work at the company? I should rather teach Sean not to be such an inconsiderate man like his own father. No matter how much I tried to warn him, my husband kept saying these kind of terrible things. He seemed to really want me to quit my job. And my husband continued to say and do things after that to hurt me and kept on telling me to just quit the job like I've been saying from before. Until now, I have wondered why my husband has become such a cold and terrible person and I hope that he would at least go back to how he was in the old days. But since I don't see any sign of that, I have given up on him. It's not that I haven't considered a divorce, but Dan's parents are very nice people, and not only me, but my parents also get along very well with them. Which is why I end up hesitating for a divorce because I don't want to cause any disappointment to my parents and his parents because of our divorce. Dan's parents and my parents are really close, but my father and Dan's father seem to go fishing together a lot, and my mother and Dan's mother both like the same artists and go to live concert shows together frequently. And Dan's parents and my parents were very protective and take very good care of our son. I felt that it would be wrong to take away the environment in which my son, who grew up with so much love and affection, was so happy with. That is why I couldn't be brave enough to divorce Dan. But my love and affection I had for my husband is growing more and more dry. 
I'm gradually getting to the point where I don't even want to sleep with him, and I sleep with my son in his room these days. Seeing me be like that, my husband didn't like that and tried to force us to sleep in the same room as him. But my son started to cry a lot, perhaps because of my husband's frustration. So he stopped, and he also stopped coming into Sean's room after that. Soon after, my husband and I stopped talking to each other. My husband continued to harass me in order to get me to quit my job. He increased my housework chores by doing things like leaving the dishes on the table after eating or leaving clothes around the room. And on days off when he was home, he would lounge around on the couch and watch TV all the time doing nothing. He also wasted my effort by going out for drinks with his co workers even after I made dinner. And when he sees me, he grins at me. What he's doing is really too childish and immature, and it's appalling. A little while later, my husband came home looking very happy. Hey, I'm home. Yes, I know. Welcome home. Another dull greeting from you, huh? Well, I'll forgive you because I'm in a good mood today. What made you be in a good mood? To be honest, I didn't even want to keep the conversation going. But since he kept on grinning stupidly like that, I asked the question. He really had this face which really just annoyed me. You really want to know? Well, I guess I don't have a choice. I might be promoted to be the head of the department. Oh, really? That's great! I thought that was simply amazing. I congratulated him with genuine feelings, but my husband says something else that made me feel down again. No, like that, you really don't have to work. Since your husband is the head of the department, you should be quietly at home and be a housewife. I was utterly and completely dumbfounded to what he had said. It seems like in any conversation I had with him, he'll try to finish the topic by making me try to quit work. Then one day, I took my son to the hospital because he had a fever. And after that, I left him with my mother at my parents' house before going to work. When I arrived at work, everyone looks a little concerned. What's going on? I asked the desk clerk nearby, and he said, Well, the president is talking to a business partner right now, and it seems like the president is very angry with him. My father is angry? I was surprised. My father is very gentle and has the capacity to laugh off at most things. So, for my father to be angry at someone must have been a big deal. I wondered what had happened. I was curious, so I went into his office. Oh, it's you, Mary. I heard Sean had a fever. Is he okay? Yeah, the fever is gone now, and he's sleeping very well now. Anyways, what's wrong? The employees were worried that you were angry, Father. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, but I heard something very unforgivable. While my father and I were having this conversation, a young man sitting across from him stood up. Oh, long time no see, Mary. Oh, Justin, long time no see. I heard that the business partner came here, but I didn't know it was you, Justin. He is a young employee of a company that my father's company does business with, and he is a very good natured kid. Justin had taken over the job from the previous person in charge and is currently in charge of our company, and he is a very nice young man who always gifts us with something to eat and talks to us. Which is very rare to see these days. But I suddenly had a question in my mind. Why was my father getting angry at Justin, who was a good person? Father, what do you mean you heard something unforgivable? Well. Then my father explained to me what Justin had told him. Justin works for an electrical goods manufacturer. And just recently, he had succeeded in developing a new business which led to a project with a major company. While he was working on the project with his other employees, thinking about quality and function, 
they decided to ask my father's company for help if we could produce some of the parts for them. So, Justin came to my father's company and held various meetings to discuss about the project. After making steady preparations, when the project was finally ready to proceed, his boss took away the presentation materials that had been prepared just before the project was about to start. And his boss then took the liberty of making a presentation to the employees and executives and took credit for it. The presentation was accepted by the executives and his boss might be promoted to be the next department manager. My face grew redder and redder and I began to get angry. Justin further told me that his boss said, The company that makes this part is not trustworthy, so I'll ask another company to make it for me. The company he said that wasn't trustworthy was my father's company. My anger reached its peak. Oh, I am so sorry, Justin. My husband did something so stupid and terrible. Hearing this, Justin says, What? Isn't your boss Dan Cooper at the company you work for? Y yes it is What? Are you saying that your husband is that Mr. Cooper? When I nodded my head, Justin looked very surprised. In other words, that time when my husband was happy that he might be promoted to department head was after he had taken credit for Justin's work. I regretted that I had genuinely congratulated him without knowing that. I never thought that Dan would say or do such a thing. When my father said that, I felt awkward for a moment. And then my father saw my face. What's wrong, Mary? Why are you looking like that? Oh, uh... I thought that I couldn't hide it anymore. And for the first time, I told my father what my husband has said and done to me until now. Why didn't you ever tell me that you were being treated that way? My father told me so and I explained that I couldn't tell him because Dan's parents and my parents were close and I felt bad about taking Sean's grandparents away from him. Hearing that, my father then says, Don't worry about that. You don't have to cut ties with Dan's parents like that. My wife and I are already friends with Dan's parents, so we will continue our personal relationship with them. And it's okay to keep on having Sean see them normally, you know? Then, what my father has said made me realize. My father was right. It would be easy enough to just stay away from my husband. I wondered why I hadn't realized that, and I felt so much better. But first and foremost, we should prioritize Justin and his team. What he and his team had worked so hard to create was taken away from them. Many people besides Justin were probably in shock and depressed. Didn't you think of protesting together? When I asked Justin about this, he replied that he was being held in a weak position. When I asked him further what he meant, he said that Dan had accused Justin and his team of violating the work hours and rules to the General Affairs Department. As a result, Justin was dropped from the project, which has become a threat to other employees. Both my father and I were appalled by this. I guess Dan needs to be punished once. My father said that quietly, but I could sense that there was a great deal of anger in his heart. Then, my father and I, together with Justin and other employees from his team, decided to have regular strategy meetings. They were all upset and afraid because my husband threatened them, but now, they were united and eager to get back at him. And we all decided to search together for evidence on how the project was created. We weren't able to find the evidence easily, but Justin and his team members did their best to find them. Justin also told the person in charge of the project from a major company about the situation. The person in charge was a very nice person, and he brought his boss to Justin's company and told the executives and the president of the company about the situation. As a result, it became known to the executives that my husband was not involved in the project at all. My husband apparently complained, Well, Justin and his team are violating the working hours. And to that, the employee said, 
Well, in that case, we will quit. The executives were very upset about this. Since it was obvious that it was Dan's fault, the executives agreed to take disciplinary action against him. In the end, my husband was demoted from a section manager to an ordinary employee and even had to transfer to a small department rather than being promoted to a department manager because he had done something terrible to lose the company's trust. On the day he was being demoted, I was waiting for Dan at home. He came home looking dismayed. You came back home late. I need to talk to you. Well, I'm not in the mood to talk to you right now. Maybe some other time. With that, my husband lies down on the sofa. Well, I need to talk to you. Shut the hell up. I'm tired. How selfish are you? I don't need you to tell me what to do. Huh? What the hell? Are you arguing back to me? Ugh, I'm so angry. You and your parents both make me angry. Hey, my parents have nothing to do with this, alright? Besides, your parents and my parents are good friends, remember? Knowing that, why do you say such terrible things about my parents? Shut up! Don't you dare talk back to me. I will never take care or do anything for your parents ever again. I won't have your parents at any of my family's weddings or funerals. If you don't like that, then get the hell out. My husband was quite distressed and said such things to me, as if he was trying to take all his anger out on me. But what he said was out of the line. Fine, but are you okay with that? What are you talking about? I'm actually glad that you're leaving. Don't ever contact me again. As he said that, I confronted my husband down with a piece of paper. The moment my husband saw the paper, he was surprised. What? Divorce papers? My husband was lying on the sofa, but he got up instantly. Hey, what's the meaning of this? You're divorcing me all of a sudden. You betrayed me, so divorce is what you'll get, don't you think so? Hey, wait a minute. Betrayed you? you? You mean to say that I betrayed you by saying horrible things about your parents? Are you crazy enough to divorce me over something like that? That doesn't matter anymore. This is why I'm asking for a divorce. With that, I spread out a document which was in an envelope out on the table. It was photos of evidence that my husband was having an affair with a woman whom I've never met. <gasps> How come you know? You look like you're having a great time here. Th this is different. It was just an impulse. I don't care if it was an impulse or a serious one. The fact that you had an affair will never go away. Divorce is absolute. Child support is absolute. Alimony is absolute. And there will be no division of property. If you aren't agreeing to these conditions, you're going to hell. What? What do you mean? You apparently met this girl at a bar, but she's a high school student. What? You gotta be joking, right? She didn't even look that young. It's true. I hired an investigator to find out if you were doing anything suspicious, and everything came out. And according to the investigation, that girl is a high school sophomore student. Cheating on your own wife alone is just disgusting, but if the world finds out you're with a high school student, you're really doomed for life, and normally you'd be under arrest. W wait a minute. I'll agree to all the terms of the divorce, so please just don't say anything about this. Please. Fine. I don't like people saying that my son's father was arrested either for such a stupid and disgusting reason. And I know some dirt about that high school girl anyways. Yes, the high school girl who said she met him at the bar have been smoking and drinking. So I told the girl and her parents that I would report the drinking and smoking to her school if they didn't pay the alimony. I heard that the girl went to a prestigious all-girls high school 
And if the school finds out, she would be expelled at once. So, the girl and her parents apologized to me and paid me $40,000 saying that they hoped I wouldn't do that. And my husband, who was afraid of getting arrested, paid me $50,000 in alimony and over $100,000 for child support. All of Dave's savings were now gone, and he was left penniless. But the fact that Dave was having an affair and that the partner was a high school student somehow spread as a rumor at his workplace, and he began to be looked at coldly by all the employees. But since he has no money at all, he has to keep working. And combined with the stress of not knowing when he will be exposed for his illegal activities, he now looks very old for his age and does not look like he is in his 30s. He deserves what he got. Dan's parents apologized to me and my parents for the divorce and the fact that Dan tried to force me to quit my job along with his affair. But since it was only Dan's fault, both my parents and I were nice to Dan's parents and told them not to apologize and to please continue to be in good terms with each other. Dan's parents were so angry with him that they disowned him eventually. I have no intention of letting Dan see Sean in the future, and now because of what he has done, Dan is completely alone. By the way, Justin and his team were able to work on the project and it was a great success. Both my father and I were very happy to be able to help Justin by providing the parts. I returned home with my son and I am now working hard as a single mother. Now that I am back home at my parents' place, Dan's parents are happy to see Sean and my parents, who are friends, all at the same time. I hope to continue to enjoy my days with this family connection other than my ex-husband. Taking credit for his colleague's work, making fun of his wife's family, and to top it off, he had an affair. He is a scumbag husband, who can only be described as nothing but a scumbag. I am glad that he was finally punished. I hope Mary will spend happy times with her son, her parents, and Dan's parents from now on. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.